Hello everyone and welcome to my Phantasm Cremation build, which is the strongest cremation character to ever exist in any temp league. And also standard as far as I know, I haven't seen anything come close to it. Uh, in the background here you can see kills and like tanking abilities of most new uber bosses. Almost all of these zones are I-85 uh, and you can see the level of damage and survivability in a lot of these clips. I'm dealing well over 70 to 80 million DPS and uh, can survive even the largest hits that almost every other build would die to. Uh, I can also ignore degens for the most part, uh, have obscene recovery. It's incredibly hard to die. Uh, I've spent the better part of the last two months min-maxing this uh, with some help. And this is where it's at now, and this is where I'm drawing the line because I'm pretty much maxed out the gear uh, and the potential of this build. So yeah, uh, it's not really meant to be a build showcase, or oh, build guide, sorry. It's more meant to be a gear and item showcase, and I want to talk about some of the texts I've included, the texts I think everyone should include, uh, how to build this character properly if you're looking to min-max, or this build properly, uh, cremation, phantasm and cremation that is. Uh, and also some of the bad gear choices I see some people make, or maybe not bad, but things I don't like uh, that have become become somewhat popular on the ladder. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to that later. Here you can see some mapping footage. This is a 20% daily map. I apologize for the occasional slideshows. My computer is like fine, but not good enough to uh, handle hundreds of mobs on screen at like 60 fps. Uh, this is a 100% daily map which was a quad beyond I believe it also has extra yes so the monsters are incredibly tanky but you can see we're not really dying at all uh, handling them pretty well the damage seems kind of low but remember these mods have like 96% DR from delirious effect. Here you can see some uber maven clips of tanking abilities, this is a memory blast, uh, which we can tank comfortably. The other abilities don't really do significant damage to us at all. The beam does almost nothing. Uh, we're gonna take the close range nuke in a bit. Uh, remember, most builds or most characters die to these abilities multiple times over, and uh, we are tanking them somewhat comfortably for the most part. I mean, that last one was a bit of a close call, but I was tanking the uh, Maven's punishment beam before then so my region was like disabled. Uh, here you can see your uh, exile meatball phase where we are not taking any damage at all. To a large extent all these clips are carried by space suppression which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, this is a blast. Uh, unfortunately I don't have any uber eater clips that m m uh, boss is a bit annoying, but I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, here you can see a quick wave 30 Omni and Kosis, which are absolutely no issue. I've done close to 100 simulacrums. I mean, I haven't really kept track, and I've never died once in in any of them. Uh, and then lastly, there's a clip of regular Cortex to show case the damage again, in case you aren't really familiar with how tanky the Uber bosses are. Here we are. Uh, this is my character. Carl, level 100 in Sentinel Softcore. Uh, you can check the character on the PV Ninja ladder. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a couple of gear points. Um, keep in mind this character is worth more than 3000 Exalted Orbs. Uh, so, just so you know what to expect. Uh, a lot of, like, all my gear is extremely overkill and super unnecessary for almost everything in the game. Uh, and this build works just as well on like 100, 200, 300x and can like steamroll all content in the game. Alright, first talking point, crit versus non-crit. I think this is the most important disti distinction to make. I'm running Elemental Overload. I think non-crit is better overall and not like a little bit, it's a lot better. Um, most of the people are running crit in the end game with like crit helmets. Uh, they have like plus four to, or plus three to socket spell crit. I think it's bad for multiple reasons. Firstly, you have to run brittle ground on your boots um, to get like 
good crit uptime, which are very clunky, and they are also make no sense with natural affinity because you want to be standing still for this and moving around with brittle ground. Uh, you also probably want to be swapping your dying sun for bottle faith, which makes you lose projectiles, and bottle faith has worse uptime than this. Then you also have to run a double block watcher's eye with the determination attack block and discipline spell block because you're losing out on the bone offering effect from your boot implicit. Uh, which then means you're losing out on a lot of useful mods on your watcher's eye, like yes on hit, which is extremely powerful, uh, and some other DR mods. Uh, and the crit builds also have to run rare cobalt tools in all of these slots, uh, with like ES and triple crit multi, and then also some mediums with crit. But you're gonna end up losing a lot of energy shield, and like a lot, a lot. Most of the people I see are running like 5 to 7k energy shield, and the best of them that have the most. Optimized gear are dealing 50% damage, like 50% more damage than me at most. Granted, none of them are as invested as I am, and you can probably get some more damage even, but I'm dealing, like I said earlier, almost 100 million DPS, and you don't need more, and you're losing so much energy shield, and also a lot of armor because you're running a crit flask instead of double armor flask, which puts you at like, I mean, like 120k instead, probably even less if you have less optimized gear. Uh, so you're losing out on a lot of yes on hit. You really don't want to uh, yes on block. You really don't want to be losing out on that, in my opinion. And then uh, like losing a ton of armor to gain the crits. So it's really not worth it. I think you should be running elemental overload instead. That's much better. Verdi's Veil is very good because it gives crit DR and unlucky hits. Uh, for a magic ring, you lose some energy shield on it from the helmet because that's like very low, but you pretty much gain that back from uh, the gloves because you have m gonna be having more yes on them because you don't need these gem gloves uh, for on earth. Uh, if you can get a, a plus four Viridis, especially for level 98 corpses, that's very good, uh, but those are extremely hard to come by. I don't think there was a single one this league, I haven't seen it anyway. Uh, but a plus two is still fine for 97 corpses. And the crit DR is very good. Of course, you lose some stats on the magic ring, but uh, because you're gonna have a magic ring, but then you can run a synth ring instead. Uh, and there are some really powerful ones you can get, like discipline effect and some other nice implicits. The crit DR I'm also missing on this version, which is very good from uh, Viridi, because I don't have a crit uh, DR watcher's eye, which ideally I would want to have, but they didn't exist this league, so no crit DR sadly. But you can swap into the Pantheon if you want to, and. I don't even think it's that necessary. You can you have 30% here, and you can also get up to 30% on your shield if you want to. Um, I think it's largely optional at this point, but it's definitely nice to have. Uh, Viridi's Veil also locks you out of a horror helmet, however, and I think you should be running a horror helmet whether you're on crit or not. Um, well, you shouldn't be running crit, so you should just be running this with the uh, hypo LE damage and suppress, and then conk, conk prefix and as much ES as you can get. Uh, this is almost perfect. I wish I had 25 Kong, but unfortunately I lost it in the last Recombinator, so I'm gonna stick with this one. 25 Kong is like th 2 or 3 percent more damage than this, but that's fine. If you are running a hype, uh, like a Horror Essence helmet, you probably have Gem Gloves. Uh, mine have the double Unveiled prefix chosen from Jun, uh, which is extremely annoying to get. Uh, do not try to replicate these. But I mean, feel free to, but it's super fucking annoying. Uh, you should could be running just like dropping one of these prefixes, probably the protector one, uh, and get some flat energy shield instead, which puts these gloves like close to 215, which is like 100 extra flat, which then gets you to like 15,150, so it's like 550 extra, yes, maybe a little bit more actually, maybe like five, like 600. Uh, and the extra gem level on Unearth is 34 right now. If you lose one of the prefix, it's going to be 32, which puts you at level 96 corpses instead of 97. That's like 6% more damage. So you're trading 6% more damage for this. Those are my thoughts on uh, Verdi's Veil. Uh, it's definitely a solid option, especially if you get started, but endgame you definitely want a horror helmet. Uh, suppression gear. I have 100% spell suppression from all of my slots. Uh, I think this is definitely something you want to be going for, but it's obviously very expensive to get on energy shield gear. Uh, and you might have a unique helmet or especially a unique body armor because incandescent heart is incredibly good for its price point. At two exalted orbs, six linked. Uh, it gives some amount of damage and an insane amount of physical damage, uh, sorry, elemental damage reduction. 
you only want to be swapping out of it once you go for a rare Val Regalia with global defenses and spell suppression in my opinion. Um, spell suppression is very good, especially for the Uber bosses. Most of those clips you saw earlier where I was surviving uh, the largest hits. If they were dropping me below 50% HP, I would obviously be dying if I didn't have spell suppression. Uh, almost all of them are spells. Uh, so yes, very good. It's not it's not necessary by any means for any part of the game, but it's, it helps if you want to be tanking uber boss abilities. Okay, I'm gonna no, talk about the tree quickly, hopefully. Uh, this is the tree with the triple cluster setup and the thread of hope. Those are the notable features. I think this tree is op like perfect. You shouldn't be changing it at all. I have optimized this tree a lot together with the help of Neurotox, who will be in the description. Uh, he helped point me towards the triple cluster tree. Um, I think this is better than anything else because it gives you a lot more jewel sockets, uh, which you want because jewels are OP as fuck. Um, I'm running Lee Shade. This is extremely good for uber bosses uh, or like anything else. All the Arch Nemesis monsters that drop like uh, dots on the ground, uh, the Altar mods, uh, mobs. Uh, drop dots on the ground uh, so this is very nice to be fair i haven't tested without it like tested bosses without it recently um, maybe it's not necessary anymore but if you aren't as tanky as i am through other means it's definitely extremely good for like maven cirrus Ubelda, so on so on uh, it gives you a lot of dr for dgens yes i'm running a triple cluster with the personal card status disorienting display uh, this is just so it's in the back. I think it's the only possible one you can use. Uh, this one has Inspired Oppression instead, uh, which is the same damage, and but you trade the res for the mana region. Uh, I didn't need the res. I don't think I need the mana region either, but uh, it helps somewhat. And this one also has Best and Self Corruption, so I'm not changing it anymore. I'm running Triple Small Cluster. This one, oh, like two with mana reservation efficiency, and this one with uh, Energy Shield. You want to have 35 effect and T1 yes on these, as much int as you can get, and then some for suffix. I have like res on all of mine. Um, these were extremely expensive uh, and are impossibly hard to make. Uh, I just bought them. These cost like between 80 and 120 X usually, depending on the tier of your suffixes. They are super powerful and still underrated in my opinion, and this is what you lose out on if you go crit. I'm also running this Megalomaniac, which I got extremely lucky on. For 30x, I got Enduring Composure, which shot I think Sadist. There probably isn't a single one uh, like exactly like this one in the league, but you can change the Sadist for another damage node or just drop it entirely. Uh, these two nodes are very good. You can also drop the Megalo and then run Enduring Composure for a two pointer. That's also fine. Uh, running Natural Affinity, like I mentioned earlier, uh, is extremely good. If you mind the vines, they can be annoying, just drop it. It's fine, but super powerful. Uh, requires some like change of playstyle though, because you really don't want to be running around, which I also fail to do a lot. I run around and then I lose the vines, which is not what you're supposed to be doing. But if you do get them, it's super powerful. Then obviously the third of all for these three points, which is very good. Uh, Malediction, which is best in slot uh, for like damage and DR. Uh, you can run Profane Bloom instead for mapping, which I do, I swap. Uh, and then I think that's it for more jewels, melding, obviously. Uh, and then the watches. Triple curse versus double curse. Some people run triple curse. I think it's not good at all. Uh, you would be running probably Whispers of Doom and then Ellie Weakness on your second ring. Uh, I have flammability on this one. And Punishment in here, obviously. And then you would be running Ellie Weak. But it's very bad in my opinion because even if you get T1 with 32% effect and then Malediction with 15% effect, that's... Uh, 29 or 30 reduced elemental res, uh, which on bosses is 9 or 10, which is like 6% damage at most, or maybe 7. Uh, so that's 7% more damage for ring suffix and 3 passive points, which I don't think is worth at all. It might be able to fill it in if you have a plus 1 curse ashes, but obviously those would go for multiple mirrors, probably. Uh, so that's not really something you should be doing in my opinion. For flasks, I run a mage blood. Obviously, this is best in slot as always. Um, basalt, granite, quicksilver. Uh, quicksilver, pretty hard to play the game without. Uh, you should be running these, especially if your ES pool is this big, because you want to be getting as much ES on block from Aegis Aurora as possible. 175 with the mod shell up, which is 3.5 ES on hit, uh, on block, sorry. Uh, and then the last slot is a flex slot. I think 
this is very good uh, to have. Uh, I'm running a Sulfur currently, which obviously only gives damage, which isn't super good. It's like kind of meh with Mage Flood, because it doesn't use the Consecrated Ground. Uh, you couldn't run any of the Ellie Floods instead. I'm like res capped without them. Uh, but you can put them on and then have a lot of DR. You saw me use one of them in the uh, in the clip boss skill clips. I also sometimes use the Quartz for um, mapping, for phasing. Uh, obviously, if you don't have suppression on one of your pieces, probably the helmet if you are crit, then you need to be running Quartz Flask and then get the last percent of suppression somewhere, probably uh, Glove Implicit or the tree somewhere else. So yeah, these are what I'm running. Swap these in or this one. And then for suffixes, I'm running 3% life regen. Uh, increased armor, this is mandatory. This is probably also very mandatory. Reduce mana cost of skills, which is mandatory if you don't have inspiration. Uh, and if you are running a hypoconk horror helmet, then you want to be dropping inspiration because GMP, Ellie, Focus, and Fire Pen are the best links by far. Or like way better than inspiration. Uh, so you need the reduced mana cost. And then I'm running crit because of elemental overload uptime. Uh, cremation snapshots crits. So if this first explosion doesn't crit, none of the projectiles are going to crit and none of the uh, corpse explosion is going to crit, which means Ellie overload is never going to be up. So that means we need some additional crit chance. This is like 100 with Mage Flood, uh, which helps with the uptime. Uh, it's still not ideal, but it's a lot better than without the crit flask. So that's why I'm using it. You could be running Movement speed instead, or curse reduction. I have some curse reduction from Quan's Ground and uh, the Belt Enchant, which also isn't ideal, but it's fine. You can also sometimes I swap in a curse flask if I like if there's a curse field or some stuff that's like very dangerous. This entire flask is swappable. I don't need the suffix necessarily, and I don't need the like flask itself. So that's very. I like this a lot actually. I am running four jewels with stun avoidance from Harvest. Uh, this one, this one, and these two, which is 60%. I'm running uh, this jewel with a stun corruption, which is 21%, and then you also get 23% from Anomalous Determination, uh, which is super important because stun is based on your uh, life total instead of your ES, uh, so you're going to be getting stunned all the time. If you don't have some form of stun immunity, you can also use the boot enchant, but it's kind of annoying because it's only active if you killed recently. Or, which I was doing for a while, uh, is the flask suffix with Mage Flood. That also works, you would be dropping the crit in this case, which is, like I said, kind of bad, but it's fine. Then, um, you have a lot of Jewel Implicits left over. Could be putting Harvest on all of these, but that'd be a waste, I think, because most of the Harvest Implicits suck, to be honest. So, I'm getting damage instead. Fire Pen, non damaments Fire Pen, non damaments Ellie pen on damaments. These are like the best damage corruptions. I don't know why nobody's corrupting clusters. These are not very expensive, like 1x these ones and these ones with the prismatic heart are like 4 to 5x. That's like very reasonable to get a somewhat good outcome. You can get like a single pen on these and it's not too expensive. I have this one with single pen and then this one with uh, double damage. Well, not double damage, but double two damage implicits. And then this one with the uh, Ellie Pen and Corrupted Blood, which is obviously super expensive and nobody else is going to be getting this because it's insanely unlikely to replicate. But you can just get CB on this one and then get the stun on one of the other uniques. And then you drop uh, like a few of the damage implicits. But you should be getting some of them somewhere, in my opinion. Like even just a few. I mean, I have, how many is this? One, three, four, six, eight damage implicit total, even if you're just getting 3 or 4, that's like some damage that's not too hard to get and you should be getting. Weird attacks I see people run is firstly um, Red Nightmare. I think it's okay, but Enduring Composure is much better and it's fine to be running around a 73 block without the Red Nightmare. Uh, it's very hard to fix this actually uh, without losing out on a lot of other stuff. So I'm just keeping it at 73. It's not ideal, but most of the dangerous hits in the game are spells anyway. Uh, so I don't really care either way. And that just means Red Nightmare isn't very good if you put it here. Uh, Enduring Composure is much better, especially if you can, can get it on a good Megalomaniac. Um, secondly, some people on ladder are running Circle of Anguish for some reason, which I think is very bad. 
because it doesn't really offer anything. Herald of Ash isn't good on this build. We don't have any physics extra scaling, and the spell fire damage also doesn't work as far as I know. So please don't run Circle of Anguish. Some okay text that other people are doing is Polaric Devastation, which is pretty cheap at this point, and uh, you can run it in this ring slot. It gives a lot of damage. The main thing I don't like about it is that it also gives a ton of cold dreads, which you have no use for because you're going to be capped from your Pismatic Hearts, your Mage Blood, and your Purity of Ice and Purity of Elements. I don't have any other sources of uh, cold resistance, and I'm capped. Uh, and some people also have uh, Tempic Gloves of Puro Hearted, which. Uh, give another like 46 at least cold dress. So it's going to be way over cap with the Polar Devastation, which is why I don't like it very much. Like a rare ring is obviously better in the end game, but these are very expensive to make. But it's okay to go for, uh, and it does provide a lot of damage. Another decent tech is the AG, which I'm not running because it's super annoying. Uh, you probably want to be running these three points if you do have the AG. Uh, but I can't spare them, so that's not what I'm doing. You would drop the frost shield, uh, the frost shield here, uh, for the AG. It's not really like the frost shield isn't really necessary for most things anyway. But the annoying part of the AG is that the range on all the useful items on him, like uh, Kingmaker, Gob with the Ephemeral, uh, a helmet with increased damage taken, Legacy of Fury, or Gravebind if you're running some kind of explode AG, uh, have extremely small range, and he's going to be lagging behind all the time because. Um, he has super slow movement speed, and I also tested it with meat shield, and he's still slow as fuck. Um, you could be running Convocation instead, I guess, but that's also another gem socket you're giving up, uh, and you also have to press it all the time. So that's why no, that's why I'm not doing him. I think he can also die somewhat easily in some of the uber bosses. Um, I haven't tested it enough, but I've seen a lot of minion players complain that their AG uh, is dying, especially in uber maven to the fireball. Um, so that's why I'm not running AG. I think it's fine, especially for Simulacrum and some of the bosses. But I also don't want to be like take like unsummoning him all the time, and I don't think he's that good uh, because there are other sources of cool. The main like draw is the fortify and the scorch from the boots, uh, or like the fortify from the axe and the scorch from the boots. But it's it's fine to run him, but I th also think think it's very fine to not run him. At all. I'm gonna talk about the POB real quick. Uh, this is the current POB. Uh, here you can see the tree as it is in game and all the items. We are looking at 2.8 million with uh, any on low life, which isn't always up, obviously. Uh, this is for punishment. And then any on consecrated ground for diversion purifying flame. This also isn't always up. Uh, I mean, you can go through these yourself and check if they're up, uh, but almost all of these should be up. Some or most of the time, and during charges, obviously, if you got hit recently. And then this is for the bone offering, the life regen, if you're blocked recently, which uh, creates this uh, this year, which gives some regen. Um, also, the regen is kind of shown a bit lower here because of frost shield, if I can find it here. If you, obviously, the frost shield regen is only up like very shortly, and then the regen actually goes. It's like between 3 and 4k, you also get some more from uh, Divine Shield, which POB can't calculate. I mean, it varies, so that's obvious. Uh, and then reduce damage taken from Plaguebringer, which, because POB also can't calculate that. This you can, this is like between 3 and 10 most of the time, it fluctuates, but you can just put 5, it's mostly for like mana region. And then we have a 90, around 90k max it. this is like actual Fizz max it. If we get hit for 90k damage, chances are we will survive. Or we will definitely survive if Enduring Shadows are up. If they're down, that's something else. But then, like, the largest Fizz hits in the game is like Uber Shaper Slam with like 22k, so this is way more than overkill. And then, I full on Energy Shield isn't always up. And then, the Corpse Life, this is the Corpse Life for level 85 zone, which isn't quite accurate because I didn't put level 85. But if you do this, or actually, if you uh, do Uber Pinnacle Boss, then it goes down a lot because of the damage reduction on them, obviously. So, I just wanted to leave it like this so everyone can compare it to their own. This is the corpse life I calculated from Griffin Price video, a way ex he explains how to do it. And then our Ellie max it is like 241k. I don't think suppression is calculated in this, but I'm not too sure. But that's what it says anyway. We can, I mean, you saw in the footage, we can tank almost everything with this. I think that's it for the BOB mostly. You can play around with it if you want. Uh, I'll put it in the description, of course, and then check out some more stuff yourself. In conclusion, this is probably one of the strongest characters in this league. 
and also probably one of the strongest characters to ever exist in any temp league. If you exclude Delirium uh, Aura Stacker, the stacker that is, uh, some of the past Aura Stackers from like Harvest or Ritual were also similarly powerful or like more powerful. In this league, the strongest builds, in my opinion, are this uh, Reap Inquisitor and uh, Ascendant Aura Stacker with Transcendence. Uh, the Inquisitor struggles a bit more with uh, very large hits uh, because he can't get as much armor uh, but it's an extremely good build and has even more recovery and the Ascendant struggles with the opposite because it has super high hit mitigation from Transcendence can tank literally every hit in the game but struggles a lot with Degen because the, your max res is a lot lower but this build is definitely among them uh, you can do all content deathless you can pretty much do all bosses while asleep at this point I think that's it for the character. If you have any questions or I missed anything, uh, feel free to ask me on YouTube, Reddit or Discord. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Narrotox, who helped me optimize this, this character, especially the tree. Uh, I talked to him a lot this league. Uh, and then also Griffin Prey, who came up with this build last league, and who I've also been talking to a bit past few weeks. Their channels will be in the description as well. And I think that's it then. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.